JJK263 was peak and it spawned a bunch of different questions, theories, and speculations. So today we're going to dive into those, but spoilers beware. Alrighty, y'all. First up, a quick reminder and PSA for anybody who sends in questions via Cash App like Daniel here, who says, how do I add the description? It cuts me off. You don't get much room to write it in this little Cash App form. So if you do have a longer question, uh, what I recommend people to do is just tell me your username in the note. So on Instagram or TikTok or whatever it is, and then just DM me so you can get as much space as you need to write out the question. So I'm going to go ahead and refund you here, but just feel free to send another one with your username so that you can have as much room as you need. All right, this next question comes from Isaiah, and he wants to know, what ass pull is Sukuna going to pull on Angel? And we'll have to see. You know, I personally don't think it will be an ass pull, although I know that's just going to be the narrative as soon as this doesn't work. But I think, it, like, it may damage Sukuna, like, a considerable amount and force him kind of into a corner to evoke the next big move, whether that's starting the merger or, you know, some other thing up his sleeve, which you know, maybe an ass pull. But again, I typically have more faith in Gege's writing than that. And I know you're probably just memeing here as a lot of people are when they talk about stuff like this. Um, but I don't know the exact shape it's going to take. I'm interested to see, but I definitely feel like this is going to be a big turning point in this battle. Next up, we got this one from Busayo, and I hope I'm not butchering the pronunciation of your name, but he wants to know if Yuji can use Sukuna's chance for Shrine. So I'm assuming you mean like the world cutting slash, and I would say that he can't because that's more than just like knowing the words to say. I feel like there is kind of more going on underneath the hood in terms of what Sukuna is doing with his cursed energy and vows, etc. So uh, I think it would take more of an understanding than just simply copying him in that way. Next up, Josue asks, what did Yuji sacrifice in his binding vow? Referring to when he was using Dismantle to try and split Sukuna and Megami's soul. So we don't know what he gave up, but one interesting thought I had is that we know Dismantle to be the slashing attack that Sukuna can send out at range, with Cleave being the one where he requires physical contact. And yet, Yuji was in physical contact with Sukuna using Dismantle specifically. So perhaps he traded the range of Dismantle and instead was forcibly touching his target Target, and in return for that got the enhanced targeting to be able to hit the soul specifically just a random idea we still don't know but maybe we'll find out next chapter Next up, we got this question from Shinubazu, who is a YouTube member. So thank you so much for that legend. And quick uh, PSA for my YouTube members. Uh, there is a private channel in the Discord for members, but in order to access it, you need to connect your YouTube account to your Discord account. I've had a few people ask me about that recently, so be sure you're doing that. But Shino wants to know, what if Gojo lives by coming back and helping beat Sukuna in Yuta's body with Rika's help? And this is a really juicy possibility. And I actually talked about this theory if you will I think back after 262 part one um, I'm not putting like a ton of water in this theory but I do think it's a very interesting possibility given the variables we have right now especially the fact that Yuta is still alive in Gojo's body and Yuta's body is seemingly there healed with Rika you know crying over it and Gojo's soul did inhabit Yuta's body before when they body swapped so what if Rika fearing Yuta has passed away or something tries to bring him back via some sort of binding vow or something like that and with Yuta still currently alive in Gojo's body what if that brought Gojo back in Yuta's body very weird, I know, but I do think it's an interesting possibility. Um, but again, for my money right now, I think the largest chance of a Gojo comeback will come in the form of him having a moment in his own body to help Yuta, but we'll see. Next up, we got two questions from Crimson, who is also a YouTube member and one of my moderators. So thank you so much, Crimson. But the first one says, when the new revelation of Soul Dismantle, does this confirm Sukuna actually doesn't know how to hit the soul like Yuji since his dismantles don't seem to behave similarly? And no, I don't think so. I think Sukuna, if he wanted to, could hit the soul with basically any of his attacks ever since he learned how to do that thanks to sharing a body with Yuji. I think the important distinction here is that the narrator did let us know that Yuji gave up some sort of binding vow in order to be doing that. So I would assume in most cases, Sukuna doesn't need to do that because I mean, in like 99% of cases when Sukuna goes to cleave or dismantle or domain somebody, they're going to die anyway. So I think it's just more of a necessity that Yuji is the first one to show us that um, and not that Sukuna can't do it. And then second, does Yuji need to come into contact with something in order for his dismantle to travel along? 
Great question. Like I mentioned earlier, maybe it had to do with the binding vowel. Maybe it's just how Yuji envisions the technique. We do know he places his hand and gets the little scissor lines. It's hard to know like whether that's cleave or dismantle in his mind. The only real evidence we have is when he used dismantle in this last chapter because he actually said it, right? But then all the questions of binding vowel, is this how he has to do it? So I don't think we have enough information to really say one way or the other. Next up, we got this theory from TWE, which references my rule of three video where I talk about the chance of Gojo and or Kenjaku returning. So TWE says in Kenjaku's case, what if it's true that he himself kind of became a cursed object? Meaning when Yuta slash Rika ate him in order to copy that technique, they were eating a cursed object, which as we know, can take over a vessel. So perhaps he could return in Gojo's body or even Yuta's original body. So I think this makes a lot of sense. Um, you know, I do think we have a lot of avenues for a Kenjaku return, and I think this would be a cool way to do it for sure. And actually, kind of on this exact same train of thought, we have this generous donation from Kale who says that his guess is Kenny has to use the technique constantly until a certain point where he becomes fully integrated into the body, and then the body becomes his, and he no longer has to maintain the technique. And so the reason Yuta is struggling right now is because he simply hasn't had enough time to fully capture the body, let's say. And so I think that solution would make a lot of sense, um, you know, and whether there's like binding vows at play to like maintain that system, if you will, I think that could also be at play. So I really like this idea. Next up, Nessie Blueberry wants to know, how did Yuta copy Curse Speech, since that would require Rika to have eaten a part of Inumaki? So I think, like you say, it either was, you know, eating a really small portion of him. Uh, we don't know what, like, the limits are. I would imagine you don't have to eat too, too much in order to get it. But there's also an Inumaki arm out there somewhere in Shibuya. So perhaps they just made the best of that situation and Rika not on that. And just as devil's advocate here, I will say that it's possible that pre-Rika from JJK Zero, before she passed on, may have had different requirements in order to copy techniques. And we know Yuta had cursed speech back then. He even used it with the megaphone, which was slightly different to how he uses it now. But perhaps any cursed techniques that Rika had might have been grandfathered into the subsequent Rika. And so it's at least possible that he never had to eat any of Inumaki. So food for thought. Next, we got this question from Bio, and thank you for the kind words, man. And Bio's question is, do you think it's possible that Kenny was healing his burnt out curse technique with RCT in the same manner as Sukuna and Gojo? And that's why he was able to maintain the body swap even after a domain expansion, unlike Yuta. And no, I don't, just because we do have one point of evidence that points to the contrary. And it's in the Kenjaku Yuki fight, where after his domain crashes, um, Kenjaku specifically references, okay, now I have time to recover my burnt out curse technique. And he's not referring to destroying his brain and healing it. He's just referring to allowing enough time to pass so that it comes back naturally. So we know at least in that moment, that's not what he was doing. So I imagine that in general, it's something else entirely. Now, what could that nuance be? I'm not sure. I've been thinking about this a lot, actually. But I think the most likely answer is some sort of binding vow where he has pushed the burden of maintaining or sustaining the technique to not have to worry about that. And he's given something up in return. Now, what is that? I don't know. Um, we still just don't know how this technique works really at all, that there could be a lot of nuance that we're missing. So I think it's something more in that realm than him being able to do what Gojo and Sukuna did. Next, we got a couple questions from Shane here, and y'all pause to read the whole thing, but the first one deals with the possibility of Gojo and Kenny returning. What if we get this big, amazing team fight? And I think that would be absolutely incredible, and it would be really satisfying to have a Gojo versus Kenjaku like battle after all of the history there. But me personally, I'm still leaning towards if Gojo comes back, it to be more of just a moment where he can help as opposed to like a full-fledged revival where he gets to fully participate in a fight. But we'll have to see because again, that would be awesome. And then for your second question of Yuta becoming Rika, I do think there's room for Rika to save Yuta in a few different forms, like whether sacrificing her own life in a binding vow to, you know, put him back in his body or just do something for him. I could totally see that happening, but at least specifically by copying the um, cursed object thing from Kenjaku, that's not his technique per se. So I don't think she could copy that aspect of it, but I do think there's paths for her to help Yuta. 
Next up, we got this question from U5 who says, if the merger is ever coming into play, I think it could be through another binding vow, where Sukuna basically makes a vow where if he's killed or defeated, the merger will instantly start. So this is interesting, right? Because I think the merger will absolutely happen, but we know one of the conditions for it to start is that all of the culling game players have to die, with a few exceptions, right? So that's really interesting. So either all the players are going to die and i put that in quotes to mean that like it's possible at least that a lot of the players have already been technically dead even if they have since come back or been healed we don't really know like where the line on that is or there has to be a circumvention of that rule like sukuna will sidestep that rule somehow either with a binding vow if that makes sense or perhaps he adds a new rule to the culling games that sidesteps that somehow um so i'm very interested to see how that plays out so could a binding vow come into play in that way i think certainly um but we're just gonna have to see Next up, we got this question from Carlos who says, my favorite channel in the world. And man, thank you so much. I am absolutely honored. It's still weird to think that like I could be anyone's favorite channel, but thank you so much for the kind words, man. But he wants to know, with the devastating news of JJK ending, he wants to ask me, how would I feel if the last and final chapter of the manga is the panel of Gojo waking up? And I don't think I would love that unless it was handled in a, in a way that made sense. Um, just because... If Gojo comes back, I wanted the reason to be to finish his character arc. Um, yes, I like Gojo and I don't like want him to be dead, but my reasoning for him coming back wasn't just to have him back. It was to kind of complete his narrative. And if he just shows up on like the final chapter as coming back, that doesn't really answer the questions that I would want answered. So I wouldn't love that. But if it was handled in such a way that like those questions were also answered then I would be on board with that. But I also think Gege is answering the questions about Gojo um, through what's happening in the story right now, which is why, again, I've said this like 12 times, so I'm sure you guys are tired of me saying it. But again, that's why I think he'll most likely come back in the form of a quick moment rather than like a true comeback at this point. So um, if that happened and it was handled well, I would like it. But if it was more so just kind of like a shock cliffhanger with nothing like else explained about it, I wouldn't like it. Like it. And finally, we got this question from Simply Sage, who says, if you listen to the season one opening and the season two opening, there's a sound that sounds awfully similar to a vibra slap. And I actually did go and listen to this, and he's right. Like, I don't think it's literally a vibra slap that was like used in the production, but it certainly sounds like one. So he says, Gege has been foreshadowing vibra slap for a long time. And I think if anything, this is more so just a little happy coincidence as opposed to like intentional foreshadowing from Gege, like he you know specifically went and found songs that featured a literal vibra slap um but really nice ear i like that but again probably coincidence anyways y'all that's all for this one be sure to join the discord come hang out with us during this break week we will probably be having our first ever discord watch party currently polling the community to figure out what we should watch so come hang out with us for that and thank you again to everyone who sent in a question i appreciate the support more than you'll know and finally thank you guys so much for watching